I'm really pleased to be able to attend the closing of the National Conference on Protection of Children from Recruitment and Use in South Sudan, where we as stakeholders have collectively determined the way forward for protection of children. At the opening ceremony, we were tasked by Ms. Agot, the Deputy Speaker of the Children's Parliament, to ensure that we use this event not to showcase or celebrate, but to propose practical solutions and to monitor and evaluate our progress in achieving these goals over time. I trust that this is the process that has taken place over the last three days. I commend the government of South Sudan for its excellent collaboration with the United Nations in organizing this important event, as well as congratulate all partners for attending and contributing to this important conference. The recent increase in verified cases of recruitment and use of children should serve as a warning to all of us. What we have achieved in terms of an overall decrease of grave violations over time can easily be undone if we do not remain focused. The hard-earned gains we have made in child protection are fragile and we must not let our guard down. South Sudan is in a delicate season. The humanitarian outlook is far from reassuring. Unprecedented flooding, chronic food insecurity, economic difficulties, and the ongoing Sudan conflict all contribute to rising vulnerability for children. These circumstances leave children more exposed to grave violations, particularly recruitment and use, as desperate families may view these activities as a means of economic survival in times of despair. It is imperative that we work together, government, civil society, UN, indeed all stakeholders, to ensure this does not happen. I'm encouraged to learn that throughout your discussions, you have tackled several key challenges and had tough discussions, including around the enforcement of laws that provide accountability for grave violations, de facto amnesties for possible violators of children's rights reached as political compromises. You also have discussed delay, delays in reunification of forces, which complicates accountability under the SSPDF military justice structures. I am happy to learn that the recommendations from the conference include enhancing disarmament of civilians, improving security through advancing the reunification of forces, the critical need for military leadership to issue standardized commands for the protection of children, strengthening of rule of law institutions, and enhanced cooperation between stakeholders. I also take note of the recommendation for effective coordination among stakeholders to address the rise in street children and gang-related violence as a concern for the well-being of children and as a possible channel for recruitment and use of children into more formal armed forces and groups. Your discussions reflect the gravity of the situation and I am confident that the solutions you have explored will help guide our actions moving forward. In conclusion, and as was said by my sister Hamida, we remember the words of Alam, the children's representative. He expressed the hope that children should be allowed to be children. They should uh, be allowed to be in schools and in happy homes and not be on the battlefield. Let us work together 
to make his vision, and indeed South Sudan's vision, of a peaceful, a prosperous, and a stable nation where no one, least of all our children, are left behind. Thank you.